From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Tom Braun. And this is Deemable Tech. The Deemable Tech podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? Ah, I've heard of that thing, the internet. You can give us a call at 1-888-972-9868 or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Um, yeah, it's me, I guess. Hey, <laughs> we're on the radio. Uh, well, we're back after quite a long break, so let's address the elephant in the room. Ray, what happened? Well, first, I mean, you were sick. Weren't you sick? Was I sick? I, I think you might have been sick. No, you've been out for four weeks. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was. Elizabeth one came week. in one week for yeah, you, yeah. and then I was sick that next week, and then uh, I forget what happened the week after that, but then the last week... I had a, a an appendectomy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Apparently, uh, append my appendix didn't no longer wanted to live in my body. It just and, blew uh, up like a balloon. No, or you know what? To? It it just it was like I had gas. <laughs> yeah. It, I got like Saturday night. I was like, oh, my stomach is hurting. Like I just felt like I had gas. So I took actually took some gas X, and um, it didn't go away. And then it started like moving to my right side, and I was like, that's weird for gas. Why is mm. it down there? And I just didn't think anything more about it. I told my wife Amber about it. But so, you know, at what point like, did you think this is a problem? I should get this checked out by a doctor. Because you went to the yard, didn't you? At no point at all, really? even after the surgery, <laughs> did I think I really need to be here because <laughs> it never hurt until after the surgery. Oh yeah. I mean, it was like maybe a two or a three on a yeah, you know sure. ten you know one to ten scale. Um, it just was kind of like, hey, I got some bad gas, kind of uh, moving around, you know, whatever. Well, who decided? Let's get. Was well, it your wife? Yeah, Amber. Um, she. Well, first off, okay, Saturday, I already had a head cold, so we were we were already probably going to cancel the show anyways, because mm-hmm. uh, my head was congested and I was dizzy and all that. Tis the season. Um, yeah, it's you know that's what time of year it is here in Florida. All the pollen is out like crazy and yeah. colds and viruses, all that. So, anyways, um. I was going to take the, the show off anyways, um, but I went to bed Saturday night, and I woke up Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, um, and I kind of rolled over. I was like, oh, Amber's up already. Little did I know she had already gotten up and went to church and came back, <laughs> <laughs> went out to lunch, and she was already back from all that, and she apparently had talked to me at some point. I don't remember any of it because I just was so dead to the world, tired, mm. um, probably from the appendicitis. Um but then I was like, oh, yeah, my stomach's still hurting. That's weird. And, it, again, it wasn't that bad. Just kind of like, oh, a little gassy. And uh, she got on the internet and started looking up my symptoms. She's like, I think you have appendicitis. I'm like, no, I don't have appendicitis. I'm thinking appendicitis is, oh, I'm dying, bent yeah, over in yeah. pain. It's like, eh, it's just kind of annoying. She's like, no, no, no. I just read three different descriptions of people having the exact same symptoms you had. We're going to the hospital right now. I'm like, nice. Okay, my wife's upset. I'm going to the hospital. Fine, let's go. So we actually went to the hospital where she's delivering at. Oh yeah, just in case, you know, like in case this <laughs> nice. is for real. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, maybe this is for real. I don't know. It's probably not. They're just gonna tell me to go home. But uh, the doctor came in. He checked me out, and they do this test where they take three fingers right over your uh, where your appendicitis is. And they your push appendix. Down. Ideally. Your appendix. Yes. <laughs> 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 and they push down and then they release. Uh-huh. And I thought someone had just shot me. It uh, hurt so bad. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep, yep. And then then they sent me off for a scan and that came back. It was positive. So they were like, yep, we're putting you in for surgery. Wow. I was like, oh, dang. Well, okay. Um, and then the next morning they uh, they did the surgery. Now they did it laparoscopically. They didn't like cut me open. They just did three holes, one on my belly button, one below and one above it. And, uh, but it still hurt. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I was out for most of the week. And uh, I'm still kind of achy. But yeah. I'm, I'm doing better. I'm doing good. And yeah. I should say, for the viewers at home, um, I'm super glad your wife was able to figure out what was going on. Yeah, Be I'm... careful looking up symptoms on the internet. Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> because most of them, like, 
They're like, you might have a cold or cancer. I gotta you know? say, this if one... If you're a hypochondriac, you should stay oh, yeah. the heck off the internet. But I gotta say, this time it actually saved my life. That's I true. I mean, because I would have... I would never have considered this to be anything legitimate. I mean, I'm 32. I'm about to turn 33. This is something that happens when you're young, below 30. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, I'm not that far old. But it's still, it's like, that's a kid's disease. I don't, <laughs> not, I don't have appendicitis. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm glad she looked it up. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you survived. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. uh, otherwise, I would have to do the show by myself. And that yeah. Would suck. <laughs> uh, okay, so today on the show, we're going to try changing things up a little bit. That's right. We are going to do uh, fewer questions. We realize that people who listen to our podcast and the people that listen to our radio segments on public radio are not necessarily the same people. Yeah, and with all due respect to our radio listeners that have joined the podcast, thank you, please. Um but, you know, the typical podcast listener is a little more tech-savvy than probably the typical radio listener. Sure. And so we want to make this podcast more interesting for those people. And we don't have really a specific plan right now to do that. Um, so we're just going to try different things, sure. um, probably week to week, and see what, what works. And if you have suggestions for things you'd like to hear us try on the podcast, let us know. Questions at dmble.com is a great place to email us. Yep. And, well, later on the show, we have some cool tech products that we are going to review. But before we jump into that, what do we have first on the docket, Tom? Well, the first thing uh, is we found a little segment called Does Not Compute. Um, Sean, do we have a a sound clip for that or something? The lightning round. No, no, Sean. That's that's the lightning round. This This is different. This is called Does Not Compute. Yeah, I don't have one queued up for that. I'm sorry. Why not? Uh, well, Tom like just told me about it about five minutes ago. So, oh. uh, you know, okay. Sean, what do yeah. we pay you for? Uh, you, you don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> In that case, you're excused. Um, yeah. yeah, we were trying. To, we were playing with it, trying to get uh, like Siri to say it, but yeah. it, it only came out like this. Does not compute. And that was really nothing. Yeah, yeah. so anticlimactic. So yeah. the idea here is um, I've compiled some quiz show style questions about tech facts. These things are actually true, but these are things that the average person might not know. And okay. so I'm going to uh, ask Ray, joined by Sean Birch, our Hello. producer, uh, some of these questions. And we're going to see how they do with them. So, you know, right. and, and again, uh, just, you know, give it your best shot, guys. I haven't. And just to for um, um, disclaimer, mm-hmm. neither one of us have. Have you read them? I have not read the okay. questions. Okay. I, I just saw them and I scrolled back up because I didn't yeah. want to see them. Yeah, oh, I my eyes. Eyes. I don't know what these, eyes. I don't know what these questions are. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like we should start a timer, but we're not going to start a timer. Yeah. That's not this kind of. That's not this kind of round. Sure. Uh, so best guess. It's not a lightning round. It's not a lightning round. Best guess. <laughs> where did the word robot originate from? Robot. 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 You familiar with the word? I am. Sci-fi um, pop culture. Gosh, I, th- I think I know this. Okay. What um, do you think? I feel like I've I've heard the origin before, but I can't pull like, it out. It's if you some... just had to had to guess, what would your what would your first instinct be, Sean? I don't know. Um, maybe it came from a, a sci-fi novel, like a, a Jules Verne or an H.G. Hmm. Wells, something I think it's like a that. Latin word for... Actually, that sounds right. ...for worker slave. You are on the right track. It's yeah. not Latin, though. Oh, it's Greek. Czech, strangely enough. Oh. Czech? Yeah. Um, so, basically... Like uh, Czechoslovakia? Yeah, and you're not completely far off, either. Uh, it comes from a play from 1920. Oh, yeah. um, there was a, a play uh, by Carol Capek. I'm probably saying that completely wrong because I don't speak Czech. Called uh, R U R or Rossum's Universal Robots, and in the play, huh. uh, basically there are these uh, human-like mechanical creatures produced in a factory, and they're docile slaves, and, so, and they're treated badly hmm. by humans. And the funny thing is. The, this is a very typical robot plot, <laughs> because one day they uh, a misguided scientist gives them some emotions, and then they revolt, revolt and, it. and try and kill Free everybody. Will. Yeah. Take Free over will the ruins world. everything. <laughs> so from the beginning, robots have been revolting against their makers and taking over the world. Here's here's the thing you need to know: if you're going to create a race of beings. Don't give them free will. Absolutely, it screws not. up everything. It's a terrible idea. Whether they're organic or mechanic, don't give them free will. And I include it humans in that statement. Yep, <laughs> ruins everything. All right, great. Um, Okay, question number two. Uh, This is a fill-in-the-blank type question. Mm -hmm. All right. Ken Olson, the founder of DEC, Digital Electric uh, Equipment Company, I believe, said in 1977, there's no reason for any individual to have a blank in their home. Uh, I 
think I actually know that it's a computer, a personal computer in their home. Okay. What's your question? What's I'm going to say, uh, that's actually what would have been my guess, but since he took it, <laughs> I'm going to say car. <laughs> a car in their home. <laughs> or truck. Do you have one. a car in your home? Like, not busted anymore. through the yeah. wall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably not At the our best old idea. place, we did, but that's why we moved. <laughs> did you live at Planet Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually mounted up in the... Well, you know my, my, our old Mercury, the 84 Mercury? That's what we did with it. Oh, <laughs> oh sweet. We turned it into a coffee table. I wish. <laughs> How about you, rat, man? Okay, uh, Sean gets the point. The answer is actually computer. Oh. Uh, Ken Olson said there's no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. Now, Ken Olson claimed the quote was taken out what of year was context. That? This was 1977. 77. He okay. claims that, uh, in fact, you know, he was totally behind personal computers, and he was talking specifically about a home that was run by a computer. So oh. if you had a computer that ran your fridge and knew when you needed to buy groceries, and he just thought that was overkill, and that's what he was talking about. You know, and a lot of a lot of the predictions, even as close as the 90s, was it was going to be one computer that did everything. That's true. But I think now the whole internet of, of mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. is really going to take place because mm-hmm. the computers are so small. Yeah. Well, y- you know, every... Every microwave has a computer in mm-hmm. it. I mean, and it's not long before refrigerators do and, and yeah. stoves. That's the next thing I see, stoves. Mm-hmm. I want a smart stove that tells me when the turkey's done on my yeah. iPhone. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, your iPhone is going to cook the turkey? No, no, no. I just want my, my stove. Because that would be awesome. I want my oven to tell my iPhone that my turkey's done. Okay. And that could be very easily done with a little th- thermometer that plugs into the oven. Nest. Nest is going to build yeah. it. Yeah. I guarantee I, I, I would do that in the prediction show. I bet it's going to happen. All right. Write that down. The We're going to do it in the oven. prediction. That would be a very big iPhone if it cooked the turkey as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd want to use that. Well, it could have some sort of like death ray. Uh, yeah. You know? But it would, uh, well, still, it would have facial it. turkey recognition <laughs> so that it only would zap turkeys. Yeah. Can be oh, oh, you could like use it like this, like just hold it up and like. Zzz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd take a while though. Because I mean, you got to yeah, hold it for like stand there for three hours, hours <laughs> and then check the turkey <laughs> and stand there for three more hours. But, you know, I actually, I, I got that idea because uh, there was a Kickstarter a while back. For turkeys? No, <laughs> for turkeys. <laughs> we well, have yes. an idea for a bird that's like a chicken, but different. <laughs> and bigger. And it has this weird thing under its neck. <laughs> no, um, it was this thermometer. Uh-huh. Uh, there was a meat and a candy thermometer. And the way it worked is you would stick your thermometer in the turkey, like you do a normal right, thermometer, yeah. I'm with you and so then far. it has a silicone cable, or silicone-wrapped cable that comes out of the oven, and you plug it into your iPad or your iPhone or your Android device. Okay. And then it would track the temperature of the turkey throughout the cooking time to where you could see you know, like how long it took to get to the temperature, hmm. and it would communicate with another iOS device or Android device mm-hmm. and say, like, you ran to the store to go get something, boom, your turkey's ready, head home and get it out of the oven. But you'd have to have a cable coming out of your oven. Cable coming? Well, it's silicone, so it's not. It's up to, like, 500 degrees, so you're yeah, fine you there. you have to, like, drill a hole somewhere. No, 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 you actually just take it out the door oh. and close the door on it. Mm, it's okay. fine. But, um, but, yeah, so you do that. But then the problem is you have to leave your i your your Android or iOS device on your oven. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, and that's, that's not problem. cool. But now for the candy making, if you've ever done candy making, I you know. gotta you have to monitor the temperature very closely. Oh yeah. So that would be really cool to be able to see it and see how fast it it raised temperature. Mm-hmm. But still, I don't want my my iPhone that close to the the no. stove. Yeah, that's why I think you know a smart oven with a a thermometer that would, plugged into it. That'd be cool. I would be extremely unsurprised to see in the next 10 years a lot of more smart appliances that can talk to your home network. But, yeah, you know. N- Nest seems to be the company for it, like mm-hmm. with the with the uh, thermostat and now the, the smoke detectors, too. Those were pretty cool. But per Ken Olson in 1977, <laughs> not going to happen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think, uh, if you look at it that way, I think he was right. Yeah. You're not going to have one main computer running everything. Yeah. Well, no. Well, Ken, not one of your better predictions. Uh, hmm. Question number three is, uh, what is the only sport that has been played on the moon? Ooh. Um, uh, I, it's golf, right? Ding, ding, it ding, is, ding, ding. It is yeah. golf, yeah. It is golf. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was tennis or golf. Yeah, yeah. I knew. Uh, yeah, <coughs> tennis I can, doesn't I, make any sense. I can visualize... Uh, that was one of the Whoever later Apollo missions, with right? The, uh, with the golf club. Yeah. Uh, bonus points if you can guess which astronaut. He's uh, one of the famous ones. Mm-mm. He, he he's is? not one of the famous Yeah, he is one of the famous oh. ones. Um, I want to say Buzz Aldrin, but I feel like that's incorrect. Not Buzz. Neil? Nope. It's <laughs> okay. Alan Shepard. That's all we got oh, Alan Shepard. <laughs> Alan, yeah. sorry. I mean, he's a tier two astronaut. I don't know. 
Uh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, they're all they're yeah. all they're astronauts. They're, they're astronauts. all famous. Yeah, they got the right stuff. We don't stuff. know them. <laughs> they got the right stuff. Hey, they don't know us, but we're still famous. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, uh, yeah no. he actually, uh, Alan Shepard hit two golf balls on the surface of the moon during Apollo 17, and presumably... It was 17, yeah. Those, mm. those, presumably those golf balls are still there. And that's why they never went back. Yeah. No. <laughs> they tried basketball Just with tragic results. Go, see, like hitting a golf ball on the moon, it's like jumping the shark. Yeah. Is it, is it because they accidentally hit somebody and the guy yelled at them? So they're like, oh, like, we can't go back there ever again. Dang, kid, get off my moon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They broke a window. No on the lunar module. <laughs> uh, I wonder if they'll ever find the the golf ball. Presumably, if we I mean, ever... it, there's no way it, it reached escape velocity, no, right? I don't think no. so, yeah. Even on the moon, I mean, yeah. Still. I wonder how far it went. Probably pretty dang far. Yeah. Uh, you could probably play a pretty epic game of golf on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, here's a physics question. In a vacuum, light travels at 670 and a half million miles per hour. Now, Harvard scientists recently used hmm. recently slowed a beam of light down. To what speed did they slow it? They slowed a beam of light down. Yeah, I thought because, it uh, always traveled at the same velocity in no a vacuum. What. But a if vacuum. you run it through, for instance, water, uh, it, it moves a little bit slower. Hmm. Hmm. Excuse me, which is why you get the refraction effect. Oh. And I'm simplifying, and I don't know a lot about physics, but I believe that's actually true. I'm sure. I think our it was as fast checking. as a cheetah. I don't know how fast that is, but that's what I'm going to go with. Okay. Sean? I, I have no fast idea. Fast as a cheetah. Uh, how, how fast? Or the speed of sound. How, how fast did you say it, it normally goes? 670 and a half million miles per hour. That's a lot of miles per um, hour. I don't know. 100 million miles per hour? Okay. Uh, Ray is surprisingly close. Oh. Yes! Uh, wow. it's, they Woo-hoo! slowed it down to 38 miles per hour. Oh, really? slower than a cheetah. Yeah. I think a cheetah runs at like 45. I don't know. Google it. I'm Googling. So 35 miles an hour? 38. How, how did they slow it down? What did they do? Uh, well, it's kind of beyond me, but they somehow created a substance where all the atoms vibrate like one atom, so it's super dense, mm-hmm. and light just traveled really slowly through it. Hmm. Um, and these are physicists, and I really don't understand the process at all, but I thought that was kind of cool. Um, other things that it traveled as slow as, uh, That's... three o'clock Friday afternoon at work. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a cheetah runs at about 57 miles per oh, hour. Damn. Cheetahs are fast. Yeah. I, um, it's funny. I was watching a special that came on during the whole 50th anniversary of Dr. Who thing. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about the science behind Dr. Who. Okay. And he was talking about the, f- the physicist was talking now, about just so you know, time travel isn't real. Well, actually that's what he was talking oh. about. The possibility of how it could happen mm-hmm. if it could happen. Was it a uh, Michi Okaku? No, oh. I have never heard that name. In he's my life. a, uh, he's a theoretical physicist. A it lot was, of the times, uh, when uh, they have shows talking about time travel or whatever, it was Brian Brian something. Oh, oh, I Brian know. Williams. No, Brian Williams. No, no that's from, not it. I know he was talking. He's British, Nightly right? News? Yes, he is from the. He is from. <laughs> I don't know his name. I can picture him, and I realize that's no help to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, uh, Brian Cox. Brian Cox. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He's been on um, QI. Uh, yeah. If anyone watches that show. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, he on was BBC. talking about you know the. Po- if it could possibly happen, they had some funny little skits where he did with Matt Smith, you know, mm-hmm. uh, pretending he was on the TARDIS and all that. But I watched it long enough to go, wow, I am not a physicist <laughs> <laughs> and I have no aspirations to be one. You really have to like math. That's the thing. Like most yeah. of it, you get you rapidly get into realms that can't be accurately described by analogy or metaphor. Yeah. And they're just math. You just have to understand the math. And I don't. That's what, one of the things I love about Doctor Who when he tries to explain something. He's like, okay, so like a, you know a tomato? Yeah, that has nothing to do with what I'm describing, <laughs> but think of a tomato. <laughs> nice. He always just does that. Like, it, this doesn't, the analogy doesn't work at all, but just yep. use that. So somehow, uh, scientists in 2001 managed to slow a beam of light down to 38 miles per hour. Huh. Slower than a cheetah. It was 2001? Yeah. Wow. That's so a long time ago. It might have gone slower since then, yeah, but that's the... They've... They might have slowed it down even more since even then. Even slower. It's been, you know, 12 years. You actually passed a, passed a beam of light on your way to the bathroom in the oh, hall. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What does a slow beam of light look like? I mean... Yeah. You got me. I, I guess you wouldn't see it because it wouldn't have gone in your eye yet. I don't hmm. know. <laughs> I mean, could you, you know, like, be outrunning it in a car? You could, I mean... I guess. But what... Weird. But, you, you know, too, and I don't know the details. It might have been, like, a... 
a microscopic distance it traveled, or it might have been mm. a single photon, you know. Okay. So that's that. Hmm. And but you don't know how they did it. I'm not in a way that I can describe yeah, intelligently. Okay. Just just that sub Fair substance enough. that they yeah. created. They or... used some sort of substance they created specifically for that purpose. Hmm. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. This is the last question. Very simple question. All right. How many bytes are there in a kilobyte? Ten twenty-four. That's not ten fifty-eight. One hundred percent correct. How you're, many bytes right. are in a kilobyte? Uh, yeah. Wait. Oh crap. Ten twenty-four is the standard answer, but apparently, and this is news to me. Actually, I just learned this a couple weeks. Oh, and I just unplugged my headset. Good job. <laughs> what are you uh, saying? I can't hear. No, wait. You can't hear me. Stop. 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 <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. No, uh, so normally... You could have just kept talking. No yeah, one would have noticed yeah, the difference. I know, but I, I was like, ah, it's like you suddenly go deaf. Uh, yeah, ask any computer geek, and they're going to tell you 1024 bytes right. in a kilobyte. Uh, the thing is, in 1999, the IEEE, I think there's three E's, <laughs> decided that was confusing. That's how it's pronounced. And that there should actually be just 1,000 bytes in a kilobyte. Because kilo in, you know, there's 1,000 kilometers, a thousand. In, right. or 1,000 meters in a kilometer. It's there's, almost kind of sort of the metric system. Yeah, exactly. And they were like, well, that's confusing. Mm. Um, so they decided that a kilobyte should be 1,000 bytes, not 1024. Mm. And that uh, instead 1024 would be a kibi byte. Hmm. A ki- who? A kibi byte. K-I-B-I byte. Which I think you can abbreviate KI byte. And the problem oh, with that I is. I've never actually heard of that. I yeah. feel. Yeah. Kind no, of, no. Wow. So hmm. it's kind of a thing. So here's actually, I believe, what happened is um, in computers, well, let me explain where this whole kilobyte thing comes from. It's not just because uh, programmers and, and other dweebs want to annoy people by having their 1,000 actually not be 1,000. Mm-hmm. There's well, a specific yeah. reason for it, because computers are not based in a base 10 system like the metric system is. Right. They're based in a base 2 system, which is binary, 0, binary. 1. All right, so uh, a bit can be 0 or 1, and if you have two bits, you can make it up to 3. So okay. 1, 1 would be 3. Right. Off the top of my head. Hmm. Um, the thing is, like, if you have, to get to 10, you actually need... Uh, four bits, which takes you actually all the way to 16. There's no, basically, there's no rounded way of saying 10, if that makes sense. Right. Right? Because it doesn't work to 10. It doesn't. You know, you can have 10 in binary, but it's like a combination of ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense to have an amount of memory that only holds 10 of something. It would really be able to hold 16 of something. Okay. All right. So that's, so 1024 is actually the closest approximation in binary to 1000. Okay. That you would actually have. So all computers, when you're talking in terms of memory and registers and things like that, they really do have multiples of 1024. Hmm. So despite whatever the IEEE says, that's the way it is. That's the way it's been since 19-whatever. That's the way it will be into the foreseeable future as long as we're using binary. Okay. But hard drive manufacturers got greedy. Okay. And they were like, we could put in less space on our hard drives if we used metric kilobytes. Okay. You know, we'll say, oh, I still, or, or megabytes. We'll say, I have 20 megabytes, but what where computer geeks would think, I have 20 megabytes and change, you know, it's 20 whatever. Right. Like, really, it will just be 20, because we can do oh. that. So they got greedy, and there was a whole lawsuit, and people wow. were confused. Hmm. And at that point, the standards <clears throat> body stepped in and said, well, it is confusing, so we'll make it uh, actually be 1,000, and we'll introduce Kiwi bytes. And I can see what they were trying to do there, <laughs> but I feel like... It's just when did that more confusing. Now? That actually happened in 1999. Wow. Yeah, why have we never heard that about this? That sneaked right past us, didn't it? <laughs> it's because nobody has adopted the standard at yeah. all. Um, the only place Except I for the people where they, where they advertise the... Yeah, yeah. So that makes so much more sense Hard drive manufacturers now. have had to... They had a settlement. And they've had to be more clear in their marketing hmm. about how but much they get actually to say a thousand is a yeah. megabyte or a thousand is a gigabyte. That makes so much more sense because I've seen a lot of times where... You know, the the package says this much, you know, this much space, but it's actually less than that. Mm-hmm. And I always figured, ah, they're just being scuzz buckets and, <laughs> yeah. and putting less than they actually give you. Yeah, well, it's yeah. kind of true and kind of not. But yeah, basically, so... But if they're you're legally talking, being scuzz buckets. Yeah, they're legally being scuzz buckets. <laughs> if you're talking RAM, then probably a kilobyte equals 1024. If you're talking hard drives, then probably a kilobyte equals 1,000. Oh. So if that isn't confusing, I don't know what is. Yeah, Wait. I always just huh. assume that there was like system information or something that right. couldn't be removed that mm-hmm. was taking up that space. I, maybe. Yeah, and there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of that? Because um, when you 
especially if you uh, divide up the hard drive or if you have a backup copy of your operating system on the hard drive. That takes up some space. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, generally speaking, hard drives are sort of uh, underselling it. And they've hmm. managed to make things more complicated for everybody in doing that. Yeah, that's one thing. I've actually been helping out a few friends uh, with their computers and viruses and different stuff. And I've realized that the manufacturers have really stuck it to the consumers yeah. uh, by just putting the partition of the restore uh, partition mm-hmm. instead of giving him a DVD. Oh, I hate that. The optical, you know. That. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I was like, I didn't realize, because I haven't bought a new computer in a while except for my Chromebook. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I just didn't realize that they're, you know, basically giving you even less hard drive than they're telling you about because your restorer partition is taking up a big chunk of that. Mm-hmm. And you can always just burn a disk and yeah. then mm-hmm. get rid of your restore partition, but, you know, who wants to do that? Yeah, actually, uh, when I got my laptop, not this laptop, but my bigger one at home, um, it, it was a custom order kind of thing, and they had a check box you could check, and they would send you the uh, CD of the uh, operating system backup. And I was like, heck yeah, I checked yeah. that box. And the funny thing is they literally burned a CD. <laughs> you know, it's just a burned CD. They are like, fine, here. It's just written in Jerk. Sharpie. Hope you're happy. It literally had Sharpie on it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they made no effort whatsoever. But they did do it, I mean, yeah. in fairness. So, but that was funny. All right, well, that's uh, all our does not compute questions for this week. Cool. If you enjoyed that segment, let us know. If you hated it with a passion, let Ray know. Hey, wait. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we do have some products. I have like a little... Christmas gift bag over here full of Sweet. stuff. Now, some of this stuff has been sent to us um, uh, mm-hmm. for us to review. Other stuff uh, we actually bought. And, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. we'll let you know which one's which uh, just for, you know, full disclosure. If we uh, really like it, it was sent to us for free. I got to tell you, though, I mean, <laughs> everything that we've been sent so far is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me dig into the bag here and see what we got. Um, I'll, actually, I'll... I'll start with something that I got a long time ago, and oh, I think right. I did mention it on the show one time. Yeah, I think we talked about I'm, it a little bit. I don't know if we fully talked about it or not. It's uh, it's called the Therapic. Or yeah. I like to call it the Star Trek Phaser. It does look <laughs> like a Star Trek Phaser. Um, My eyes! <laughs> it has, uh, to describe it, if you're not watching the video, uh, it does kind of look like a, a prop from a, a 1960s or 70s sci-fi movie. Uh, it's plastic, and it's gray, and it has some silver trim on it. It has a, a red uh, tip. And a blue button. Now, to explain what it does is it is a therapy device for bug bites. So, let's say you get bit by an ant, especially, or a mosquito, or something like that that stings or itches. What you do is, just after you get bit, you take it and you place it on your skin, or right where the bug bite is, and then you press the button. And inside, behind that red tip, is a light bulb. Now, it's overpowered. Uh, it's running a 9-volt battery. But it's like a 5-volt uh, light, so it gets really hot. And you hold it on there for 30 seconds or as long as you can stand it. I'm a redhead. I have a low pain tolerance. 30 seconds with this thing is really tough to do. Hmm. But I make it through, so you can too. Um, but it actually really helps. It makes the, the itch and the pain from the bug bites go away. Hmm. Um, I'm also very sensitive to flea bites. So yeah. if you like, I come over to your house and your cat's out, I'm probably going to get a flea bite. It just happens. It, even if nobody ever notices fleas in your house, I will find the flea. It will bite me, and it will turn into a big red welt. So I just do that for 30 seconds. It stops itching. It's really cool the way it works. Um, apparently, with uh, ants, uh, scorpions, I believe, um, and bees, the poison that they inject actually breaks down. It's called thermobile. Mm -hmm. or thermobile i can't remember Mm -hmm. how to pronounce it um but it breaks down when you apply heat to it Hmm. so the chemical actually uh the molecules and the chemicals uh dis uh what's the word for it dissipate dissipate yeah they they break up uh, molecularly Mm -hmm. and then your body just absorbs it and it you know excretes it scorpion bites this could treat scorpion bites. yeah yeah actually actually i mean i've never tried it myself but they say it works and it's (laughs) fda approved and it's the canadian fda i can't remember what they're called the Canadian. The FDAA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see what I did there? <laughs> I'll let your sister know. <laughs> oh, she'll love that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, so it's been approved by the FDA. They can legally say that this does help treat uh, insect okay. bites. Well, that's good. And uh, I've used it on mosquito bites, ant bites, um, and flea bites. bites. Sorry. Um, 
and I think a spider bite, but I wasn't really sure if it was a spider bite, but I think it was. And you didn't ask the spider. No, I, I didn't see the spider, but it looked like a spider bite. What about a KB bites? <laughs> <laughs> KB bites? No. KB bites. <laughs> or kilo bites. No, I've never tried it on that. Um, but the, the, the only thing is you have to use it almost instantly after the bite. Like mm. you can't wait more than like five minutes. Otherwise, it's just not as effective. So you need to really carry it on your person. Yeah, yeah. At I mean, all times. Because like my, my daughter, Zoe, she loves this thing because she's just as sensitive to flea bites as I am and mosquito bites. And we found out the hard way with her because she got bit up by mosquitoes mm. but didn't use this until later on that night. It hardly had any effect mm. at all. So you really have to do it right yeah, away. Yeah, really soon afterwards. But after, what's cool is you do it, and especially for uh, like the flea bites, so I've noticed they stop itching, <laughs> period. And they don't itch anymore. And they, the it, the swelling goes away. It's great. So if you're going camping, it sounds like that'd be great. Somewhere that you really know, hey, I'm likely to get bit. Yeah. Because for me, I, if I go for a walk, I'm not going to remember to take that with me. And then I'll get one Well, actually, bite. I mean, I would. it's got a little thing for you can hook it on a lanyard or throw mm-hmm. it on a backpack, you know, mm-hmm. something like that. So it's, And it's not too heavy. It's not incredibly lightweight. But yeah. it's it it's pocketable. Yeah. Yeah. So... But uh, yeah, it, this was, I believe it runs for about 12 to, or $10 roughly, uh, maybe 12 with shipping and handling. You can okay. pick it up on Amazon um, or from their website at therapic.com. And uh, this one was actually provided, was sent to us for us to check mm-hmm. out. And I actually asked them for it because I thought this was a really cool product and I wanted to try it. So, And it looks like a phaser. You can run around and go pew pew. Now, we, we did a full write-up review on dmobile.com for this one. How long is the uh, battery life on that? Um, I noticed it That's lasted a nine for, volt battery, right? yeah, it's a nine volt battery. It lasted probably for around 50 uses, mm. roughly. Um, I, I, that's a really rough guesstimate. Yeah. It's, I I'm, ch- I'm just test. wondering if, if you were going to take it camping or something like oh, sure. that, would you want yeah, to make sure of times. Yeah, <laughs> that you had your brain and back up batteries with yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, it, th- I've only changed the battery in this twice. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, this is you probably this Zoe is the second battery. Hmm. Yeah, Zoe will run off with it and play with it. So. Hmm. I mean, if they made a USB chargeable, <laughs> it'd be fun. <laughs> oh wow, that'd be crazy. Yeah, I, I, I want everything to be USB chargeable. I was very happy when I got the 3D glasses for my 3D television, and I was like, sweet USB charging. Now I have these sunglasses like plugged in my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> now are they micro or mini USB? Uh, they're they're mini. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. I don't like the micro USB ones. Yeah, that's yeah. just annoying. All right, what else have we got? Let's see. Drum roll. Uh, <laughs> Wait, Sean, can you give us a real drum uh, roll? Probably not. Maybe, let me see. By the time you get done with the drum roll, <laughs> would I'll have it out. All right, so this is the Jensen water-resistant shower Bluetooth hands-free speaker. Mm-hmm. This is the, I bought this one. At last, um, you can answer phone calls in the shower. You actually can answer phone calls in the shower. <laughs> um, it works really great. I was surprised. Um, I was looking for something like this uh, because I used to have a uh, shower radio. Uh, it broke a long time ago. And I just I don't listen to AM, FM radio that much. <laughs> I listen. I mean, I like a lot of stuff that's on AM, FM radio. Especially 89.9 <laughs> WJCT FM. Exactly. Um, but I, I prefer listening to podcasts or shows online. I listen to sure. WJCT online all yep. the time. Oh, there you the go. mobile website is really awesome. Not just to plug WJCT, but it actually is really great. You go to news.wjct.org. There's mm-hmm. a player right there, and you can shut your phone off or you know close the the monitor the screen off, and uh, it'll keep playing. Kind of cool. So, anyways, with this, what you do is you can pair it to your smartphone or your or your tablet. It's got Bluetooth, right? It's a, yeah, it's a Bluetooth speaker. Um, and then you can play your music or podcasts or anything you got coming from your, your device. And it'll play across this. The sound quality is pretty much what you would expect from a shower radio. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty sealed up so that's waterproof. Um, but it doesn't sound bad. I mean, it's not terrible. This isn't something that you're going to want to jam you know, around the rest of the house. But for a shower speaker, uh, compared to the AM, FM radios and the CD mm-hmm. shower radios... It sounds really good. Okay. I have taken a phone call on it. Um, <laughs> there is actually a, a button on the middle to answer the phone. Um, and if your phone rings, you will it will come through here. And if you press the phone button, you will answer it. Ray, uh, just so you know, if, if I ever call you and you pick up and you're in the I shower, will answer if you I will call hang me. up immediately. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's really easy to pair. And the battery on this lasts insanely long. Um I wish I knew how long it lasted, 
Uh, but I've only charged it twice, and I bought this around last Christmas. Wow. wow. So this, uh, literally, I've only charged this twice, and <laughs> I use it all the time. Um, uh, for parents out there, if you have a young child and you start playing Disney songs while they're in the bathtub, they will uh. love you forever. <laughs> or a little girl, most likely. Um uh, my my little one, I, I started playing uh, princess songs while she was in the bathtub, and she was like, "Ah, daddy, thank you." <laughs> That's great too. Um, you <laughs> you could kind of control a playlist for people that yeah. are in the, in yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and now it does use a micro USB to charge it. Mm. Uh, it doesn't come with a charger, which I've noticed that a lot of products don't come with chargers lately. Hmm. Um, they just come with a USB plug, which I kind of like because especially products that are designed to go along with a smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, you already got a USB charger. I don't need you to send me another one. Save the 20 bucks That's and true. make the product cost less. Um, what's neat, though, is it has this cap that goes over the back of the charger to make that waterproof, too. Mm. Oh, okay. So the, the only annoying thing is, though, if you, when you're charging it and you take that off, you have to make sure not to lose this, this little cap that goes over it. So I wish that was attached to it somehow. Um, but otherwise, it's a really great product. Uh, you can even uh, pause your playback, uh, fast forward, and, and rewind. And there's volume controls on here, too. Hmm. It has a little cord that hangs up from the top. And there's also a little thing, a little plastic hook that comes with it. So you can hang it hmm. from a, a rail or hang it from the shower curtain. Okay. So kind of cool. Now, where did you buy this? This I bought at Target. It was sixty nine ninety nine. Okay. Um, so a little pricey. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping the price will come down on it. I went ahead. I, I think this was a present actually. My wife bought for me. Uh, it's funny. It's been so long, and I've been meaning to talk about it on the show. Uh, but it really was a fantastic buy, and I use it all the time. And the and the battery life is insane. Really Excellent. great. Excellent. All right. Cool. Uh, let's talk about another uh, speaker type product we have. The, That's right. Uh, HD. Flip headphones. I believe uh, they're called Solo to Social. Yeah, says. these... Now, we actually... We both have one. Uh, these right. were sent to us to check out. And there was a little project that I was working on. And that's why I actually asked them if they would send this to us. These are really cool. Uh, we got them in white and black. Let me open them up here. Tom's opening his up, too. That's right. Uh, I'll play of, a drum roll for you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, there we go. I can never remember how I'll to open them. Yours. They open kind of, <laughs> the, the case is kind of cool the way it opens. It's magnetic. Yeah, it's very, it's kind of that elaborate sort of uh, eye product Stylish. style yeah. presentation. It's like, unbox it. It's sexy. So what's neat about these is if you've ever had been playing music and like you want your friend to listen to it and you're hanging out, this is assuming you have friends. I don't have any of those. Tom, do you have friends? <laughs> Uh, I used to. I think you're my only one, you and uh, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not sad. I don't like people. It's not it's not okay. Technology with, is our friend. It's our <laughs> That's friend. right. That's why I have social networks. You're my friends <laughs> online. No, uh, it, so it comes in this kind of cool hard case so you can store them in. It zips up. And what's nifty about these is you can play music like just like normal. Put them on your headphones. I can't do it because I have my headphones on. But what you can also do is flip the cans out so that they're facing away from you. And they become speakers. External speakers. Hmm. So you do have to, the only thing is they have to be battery powered, which they have a micro USB mm. to charge them up. Mm -hmm. And they come with a USB cable to charge them up on. Um, but otherwise, they are really loud. They're, they're strong sound. Yeah, they're uh, loud. definitely louder than you'd get on your, uh, on your iPhone. Oh, yeah. And um, they, they have a pretty quality sound. Mm -hmm. Um they're a little heavy on the bass for me, um, but I yeah. like music that tends to not be so heavy on the bass. I think they're, and I'm a little bit of an audiophile. Yeah. Um, I think they're okay as far as sound quality goes. They're not not spectacular. And I th I'd say that for the headphone side as well as the speaker side. You know. Oh they're, really? Yeah. They're they're, they're average. Um, I mean, you can get some over ear, and these are over ear headphones. Yeah. That, you know, they're large. Uh, you can get some over ears that are really. A spectacular quality, and I don't think these quite get there. Um, like you said, a little bassy. How, how do you think that they compare to like Beats audio? You know, that's what I was just thinking. Uh, a couple years ago, I was in shopping for new headphones, and I tried Beats audio, and I didn't. I was not impressed. Really, especially given the price point. See, I, I, now that may have that situation may have improved because I see a lot of people with Beats audio now, so possibly it's gotten better, or maybe people just don't care. But 
uh, you know, I wound up going with uh, these Bose headphones, which even <laughs> oh, though they were Bose, Bose headphones, yeah. yeah, but they were cheaper than the Beats Audio. Hmm. Really? Like, you okay. got to understand. <laughs> but much sharper sound. Yeah, I've heard uh, some of the same things about Beats headphones. They're very bassy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, honestly, comparing it to, Be- to Beats Audio, uh, which I would kind of, th- I would compare these to, I mean, I, I don't think they come anywhere near Bose quality. Mm-hmm. But I think that they are right on par, if maybe a little bit better than Bose. Mm. I mean, uh, Beat, Beats Audio. Yeah, mm. maybe. Um, I think they have a, a similar range of sound, um, and I, I do like the quality of them. Um, the only, the only, my only complaint with them is actually when you wear them, they kind of suck your ear a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, uh, they're they're the ear vampires. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it, but they feel a little bit more. It's like uh, I have a big head. Yeah. I have to admit, I have a big head. That's a problem so for me, too. it might be that these are just a little too tight on my head. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do expand pretty decently. Yeah. Now, they do have a thick band over the top, which isn't quite as flexible as some of the thinner bands. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got to support, you know, fairly sizable ear can, so I, yeah. I understand that. But um, And now, unlike the, uh, the, I think these are Sony's that we're wearing right now, um, this only has an eighth inch stereo mm-hmm. plug, uh, so you couldn't. I mean, you'd have to use an adapter to plug it into a quarter inch slot. Sure, um, but most folks are yeah, using eighth be inch nowadays, anyways. Yeah, and I guess you know. So I, overall, I I thought they were decent. Um, I was just trying to like figure out like when would I actually use these? Like, if you're the kind of person I guess that's always jamming out in your headphones, and then you're like, yo yo, you gotta listen to this song. Yeah. Then maybe these are for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, actually, that's exactly who. Uh, if if you are constantly sharing music with your friends, yeah, this is perfect for that. Yeah, uh, because you don't have to worry about or think about you know carrying an external speaker. You can just literally just flip them out, and you've got great sound. Mm. I, I mean, I think they do sound better when they're flipped. Mm. Um, yeah, the quality of the headset is you know like I said in that Beats audio range, mm-hmm. um, but. When they're flipped out, I think they have a great range of sound. It's the same speaker. Uh, it's just a different way that they're that they're using the speaker. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to show one thing if I can pull it up here. Uh, if I you s- want to play something through? I wanted to play something through. That's a good idea. I think I can do that. I was Let's trying see. to figure out, you know, what's my application for these headphones, and what I landed on was uh, I did housework with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's oh, okay. That's a smart so, idea. Yeah, um, and I kind of wished, uh, and, and you know, the way they work as they sit around your neck obviously even when mm-hmm. they're external mode it's the idea is it would sit around your neck and you just flip the earphones out and they become speakers um so it wouldn't really work i don't think that well for uh kind of the application where you're at the gym or you're running now, uh, they're fairly stable but you know they're just there's nothing really securing them on your shoulders so they sound better than you know most of the time when i you know want to show my girlfriend something on my ipad i'll have to turn up the ipad sure. right does it sound better than that um, that's a good question. Let me see if I can get a video to come up here. I'll try that. Um, now, actually, my original concept for this, I'll, I'll let it, let the cat out of the bag. Um, we were talking about doing this thing where we would have people playing instruments on their smartphone, but as a band. Mm-hmm. So kind of like the iBand or something like that. But we were going with more of a an orchestral arrangement, like a bunch of people doing it. Mm-hmm. So the idea was we would play instruments over these. <laughs> nice. So that's a trombone. Yeah. Um, but that's an app on there. And that's just playing it through the headphones. And that's actually about six inches away from the mic. I'll bring it a little bit closer hmm. if Sean doesn't let me blow out the yeah. board. Why the trombone? <laughs> 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 so there you go. So that'd be the idea. So I mean that that gives you a sense of the the quality of them. Of course, it's really hard to feel what it sounds like going through sure. a microphone and then through mm-hmm. your speakers at home. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh nice. It's a mashup. Yeah. <laughs> this song has a whole new meaning when sung by a guy. <laughs> well, uh, did they just slow down her vocal? 
I think that's that's Katy Perry. Oh, hey, nice. <laughs> I really like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are Flips Audio Collapsible HD Headphones and Stereo Headphones, and you can pick them up for $119.99 on Amazon.com, and they're pretty decent. Yeah, pretty good. Um, that was actually, the app I was using is called um, Crossfader. Um, it's an iOS app where you can take different songs uh, that are already set in loops and uh, mix them together. Yeah, I'm jealous. You can kind of mix them up. It's kind of fun. I love the uh, Daft Punk uh, Star Wars Cantina (laughs) rates up there. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. um, All right, so we got some more stuff in the bag here. I think we do. Bring it up. Before we do, I want to say, uh, please let us know if uh, you want to hear more of the uh, uh, Ray Plays Trombone (laughs) segment (laughs) in future episodes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> now, um, uh, you were asking about Katy Perry. Uh, it was actually Katy Perry. Just slowed down for yeah, the beat of the. That's what okay. I figured. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, now, this one I know we've actually mentioned on the show before, um, and I have wrote up a full review of it. This one, uh, the beat or the not beats. Sorry, the flips audio. Those were sent to us for us to review, um, and this one was also. Uh, this is the Jabra Halo Two. Uh, now, this is a Bluetooth um, headset that uh, works with your phone or with any Bluetooth uh, device, like your tablet or iPad or uh, Android device. And if I can get it out of the box here, I'll show it to our video watchers. What are they called? Watchers? What do you call them? (laughs) Listeners? You got me. The The audience? I I think it was Wisners. Wisners. Yeah, it was terrible, whatever it was. So the, uh, the Jabra Halo 2 is a Bluetooth headset. And these are sexy looking heads. Uh, they set. are. I, I love the design. Every time I wear these, people stop me. Mm-hmm. I have not gone a single day wearing these where someone hasn't asked me what they were and more, want to know more about them. They look like they're from Star Trek Next Gen, I think, or, yeah. or Voyager. Maybe, maybe even Deep Space Nine. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the new, the reboot. Not, oh, yeah. Not Enterprise, though. No. <laughs> not, not. not Enterprise. Um, so they're they're... They're very stylish looking. They're very sleek. Mm. Uh, they have a very smooth design. They do fold, which also we didn't show yeah. that, but the Flips audio do fold as well. Yeah. Um, but they fold, and when you put them back together, it's, it's actually hard to see where they flip back together. I know together. the seam, the join there is really uh, tight. Very smooth. Uh, on the inside, they have like a velour material, which I'm actually not very fond of, oh, yeah. uh, just because it wears down really mm. quickly. Uh, but it does feel really fantastic when you first get it. Um, it looks like leather, um, but it's actually just a, a, a matte plastic, um, and it's very expandable. It fits my big head and my daughter's little head, so it <laughs> goes all over. Um, but what it, what's really cool about it is you pair it with your 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 phone or your tablet, and you can make phone calls on it. Which the audio quality on the phone call side isn't that fantastic, but Honestly, I was comparing it with my iPhone 5 and my iPhone 4S, mm-hmm. which the audio quality on those is absolutely amazing. So comparing it to other Bluetooth devices, it's about on par. Um, what's really great about these is listening to music on them. Mm. Um, you can listen to podcasts and it, just your regular playlists or Spotify, and wirelessly you can listen to all of your stuff, and it's really fantastic. I use these for podcasts all the time. Mm. And unlike, you know, usually... The thing I, about Bluetooth headphones is they tend to be pretty bulky. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're really they're about the size of like the Flips audio that we were mm-hmm. looking at, and these are very thin and stylish, and they fold up easily. You can pop them in your pocket. And what I really liked about these that I have not used one single time, but I, but I thought it was a really cool feature when I got them, is you can plug the a USB cord into it that has a headphone jack on the other end. Plug them into your device and use it wired. Oh. So if your battery is getting close to dead, oh, yeah. not nice. if it's dead. For some reason, you can't use it if it's dead. Hmm. But if it's close to dead, plug it in, and you can keep on going. And there's a significant difference in the audio quality when you plug them in versus mm-hmm. wireless. Uh, I'm guessing that the the battery must power some drivers. Um, it, it has a, a b- bass boost. Um, it's certainly not as, as powerful bo- uh, bass as the Flips audio, right. mm. but it, it kicks pretty good. I mean, nothing amazing. I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to hip hop or, or heavy rock on this, um, but it, I mean, most music sounds really great on them. Uh, 
there's a button on the side to answer phone calls or to pause your music. Okay. And the volume control is really great. It's a touch slide. Hmm. So it, there's no button. You just slide your finger up or oh, down. Oh, that's T- very it's, cool. So that brings it up or down. So I usually find myself just kind of going like this, you know, <laughs> sliding on the side of my face. I think if you scratch your ear and you're actually tur- accidentally <laughs> oh, turning down yeah, the turn audio. Turn it down. Now, yeah, you man. mentioned, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. I was trying to say, you mentioned uh, taking phone calls on it. Does it have a mic built yes. into the headset? Somewhere. It's there because people hear me. I don't mm. know how. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> I'm. I know that it has two microphones actually because it, it does noise cancellation. Oh. Uh, with having two mics, I don't know where those microphones are. I huh. assume that they're under the velour, mm. probably on the front and the back was where I would assume they'd be. Um, now I actually bought these on Amazon used before I contacted Jobber and asked them if they would send me one. And I did that because I bought them used because I was just checking them out for myself and I was going to write a review on them. And they didn't work right. Hmm. Um, I noticed that when I had my iPhone 4S, I put it in my pocket, it would break up while I was walking. Hmm. And it, 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 like, it, 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 that's not good. And that's really annoying. Yeah. So uh, He was just demonstrating that. <laughs> People listening to the podcast that there's nothing wrong with the Evil Tech this yeah, week. There's nothing wrong with your, with your audio. That was me <laughs> demonstrating how bad they were. Everything um, is working. Fine. <laughs> but it, these were refurbished ones that I got used. Um, so that's probably why they were returned because mm-hmm. they weren't working right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jobber sent me another pair to test out. And these work much better. They break up uh, maybe if you're walking, like you're power walking. They might break up like every 30 seconds if you have it in your pocket. Hmm. Um, but if you're wearing like an armband, where which most people would do anyways if you're walking, mm-hmm. um, it, you, it won't break it up at all. Like hardly ever. Hmm. So... Uh, Otherwise, like I said, pretty good audio quality. Uh, these run anywhere from fifty to eighty dollars online. They're currently seventy two ninety nine on Amazon dot com. That's between fifty and eighty dollars. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're a pretty good buy, especially if you like listening to music or podcasts on the go. Uh, it's a very nice, good quality sound, um, and you don't have to worry about cables hanging everywhere. Very cool. Uh, and the, nice. the Flips audio, we didn't mention the price on those is 119 Yes. No, we didn't so. mention that. Oh, we did? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. Tom snuck it in. We have, I think, one more. One more. One, one more thing. All right, what is it? Drum what roll? is it? Show Drum us. Roll? Drum roll? Drum roll? Drum roll? Drum After roll? I get the product out. All right. So this is the AudioVox Mobile TV. Mobile so, TV. Mobile TV. So this lets you have wireless live local TV on the go. Now, as I'm pulling this out, do you remember the Sega Genesis? Sure. Or no, Game Gear. I'm sorry. Sega mm-hmm. Game Gear. Mm-hmm. Vaguely. Did you ever see the um, the cartridge that let you watch TV? No. No. This is the coolest thing. It was a cartridge that went into in your 1989. Sega. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, in, <laughs> back in the 80s. Uh, this Sega Game Gear cartridge. You plugged it in and you pulled out this big antenna. It was like four <laughs> feet tall or something, probably like two foot, but it was huge. And you could watch TV on your tiny little Game Gear yeah, screen. Yeah. And I, I thought I wanted that thing so bad. I wanted it. <laughs> it was like you know two hundred bucks just for the cartridge, and I never got it obviously because we were poor, so that wasn't going to happen. But this reminds me of that. It's this tiny little device. It's like uh, maybe the size of half of a pack of cards. Like, if you cut the cards right in half, yeah, yeah, it's about the same thickness as that. Like, if you put two together, that'd be a pack of cards. And it does have an antenna that comes up and pull it up. It's only about eh, six to eight inches, maybe. But what this little device does is it lets you watch television on your iPhone, iOS, or iPad, or, or Android device. Get out. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, seriously, get up. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm still Tom, doing the show. <laughs> Tom, we need him for the show. I don't think we can continue. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Show. I was just so impressed. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to spend time with that well, by myself. Really, now, this one was sent to us to, to, to review. Um, what's really cool about this is you don't have to have a data plan. Hmm. Like when I first heard about it, I was like, whoopity doo. <laughs> um, Comcast has had that for like two years. You can watch... Comcast. You can't watch local TV, but you can mm-hmm. watch a lot of live TV on your Comcast app or uh, you know Roadrunner, whoever you deal with. Most most cable companies now a days have some sort of app you can watch it. But you have to have Wi-Fi to watch those. Mm-hmm. They won't even let you do it over cellular. You have to have Wi-Fi. Hmm. Um, and yeah, you can watch Netflix or Hulu or whatever you know over your cellular plan. Um, but what's cool about this is no matter where you are, uh, whether you have internet access or not you can use this device to watch local television. So the way it works is you turn it on 
and it boots up and it gets a connection where it'll start downloading television. Uh, and it uses uh, a different channel. It's a digital channel than the regular uh, stream, but it's the same stuff as the regular uh, television stream. And then once you turn it on, it's actually creating a Wi-Fi hotspot for you to connect to. So you take hmm. your iPhone or your Android device and you open up the app. Let's just see if I can pull it up here. And we're going to assume that it's going to work perfectly. First now, you, time every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to switch from your whatever you're connected to to this other hotspot. So you have to make sure that you've downloaded the app first, obviously. Mm. So let's see if it's coming up so here. If you're here it on is. Wi-Fi, you actually have to disconnect. And connect right. To this. So right now it's showing the AudioVox mobile television hotspot. I'm connecting to it, and then once it's connected, there it is. I can go back to the app and tap on live TV, and it shows me, you know, our local stations: Channel Four, Channel Twelve, Thirty, Forty Seven. Obvi oddly enough, WJCT is not on here not yet. Not picking up. Yeah. Not yet. So all I got to do is tap on the channel I want to watch. And within a few seconds, it loads it up based on how the reception is in here. It's kind of a Faraday cage in here blocking <laughs> everything. But it's coming up. Let's see. Might have to move it out closer to the, <laughs> to the outside to pick up the stations. But anyways, it, so it picks up the, the TV. And you can watch what's on the local television right here on, the, on your phone. And this would be kind of cool if you are watching. You're in an RV. Oh, there it goes. There's, there it goes. There's, there's, nice. That that actually looks pretty good. It's yeah. a yeah. it's a small screen, but yeah, yeah, it looks great. I mean, it looks as, at least as good as a digital TV antenna that you'd put on your 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 set top box. Now sure. That, yeah. That that uh makes me wonder. You know, uh, a lot of uh, local TV stations, mm -hmm. since they've switched to digital, uh, they offer digital sub channels like uh, here at wjct we have three yeah, digital yeah. sub channels does it pick up those as well it's a special channel just for mobile devices that, yeah yeah this was a uh a partnership uh, amongst several different companies um uh channel 12 was one of the companies is owned by one of the companies uh, that was Cops. part of nope gannett uh yeah uh, gannett, yeah yeah. Gannett, um, yeah they were actually part of it and that's actually where i found out about this uh, hmm. phil amato on first coast was on First Coast Living, mm. and I contacted him after the show to ask him about it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so we, you know, coordinated on that to to see if we could get one to try out. Um, but it, it's the app, the mobile TV app, is by a company called Ciano. Um, it's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, it's free, mm. and uh, the the device, like I said, it's called the AudioVox Mobile TV by Dial. Um, that was the thing that was interesting. There's so many different companies involved in this product. Yeah. Like AudioVox makes it. It dials product, but AudioVox make it, and Ciano makes the app. Hmm. <laughs> so they're kind of getting everybody involved, you know, mm -hmm. to make this little product. The size of it really surprised me because I don't know what it was, but online it looked bigger yeah. or on, on mm -hmm. TV. Um, but it really is tiny in the palm of your hand. Yeah, it's pretty lightweight too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. check it out. It only, it, it almost kind of oh, yeah. reminds me of like uh, an Altoids box. It yes, does. Like that's a, exactly like the a perfect. smaller Altoids box. It's, it's just like an Altoids box. Um, now this does charge via a mini USB, mm -hmm. and um, it lasts for about two to four hours, roughly. Um, I used it at work. Uh, I had it sitting on my desk and was watching TV <laughs> at my desk. <laughs> oh, it was really kind of cool because. I, you know, we have Wi-Fi, but it's not official Wi-Fi for our business. It's mm -hmm. like downstairs three floors, so I barely have Wi-Fi there. And I was getting a great TV signal and watching TV at work. Nice. <laughs> um, it, uh, it actually looks a little bit better on the iPhone than it does on the iPad. Hmm. And I think that's just the resolution Probably difference. the size of the screen, yeah. 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 So, but it works really great. And, uh, you know, if you are in a situation where you just want to watch TV on your, your, your mobile device, or... If, some of the use cases, like if you're in an RV, yeah, um, or if you're like going to Daytona, you know, and watching the races, this would be a really good thing to take mm -hmm. with you. If you're on a bus or, or even, something, yeah, 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 on a bus where you don't have, may not have Wi-Fi, or on a boat, or on a boat, yeah, on a boat, everything's better on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it it works really great. Um, cool. It seems like one of those things where if it had come out five years ago, though, yeah. mm. it would have just exploded. Everyone would have one. Um, but it seems like now it's like, well, I can get 
you know, these other apps, you know, and it's either free with my cable or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I realized there is no way for me to watch local television on my device other than this. Sure. So that is one thing that makes it, you know, like if there's a storm, mm-hmm. I've got at least two hours I can watch TV on my device as long as my iPhone and my and this stays charged. Hmm. Yeah. I can watch it. Good yeah. point. Good point. Yep. So it could be a really useful emergency yep. tool. So that's $99. $99.99. Um, and you can pick it up at, uh, I believe Amazon has it. Yes, they do. And you can get it from their website, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, cool. Is Anything that it else for in the goodie bag? Uh, the product uh, reviews? I think they probably are, yep. there's, uh, no, there's nothing else in my goodie our bag. Our last review is Ray putting a bag over his yeah. head. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the rest crazy. of the show like yeah. this. Where's my mic? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I think we'd better start wrapping things uh, up. Oh, wait. No, we, yeah, we actually do have one more. We actually have one more. Oh, that's more. right. Sean has yeah. something. It is from me. Uh, yeah. You may be wondering why I'm on the show today. This is the main reason. <laughs> uh, I'm holding it up so uh, people watching the video can see. Yep. It what is, is it there? called the Life Proof Free case for ipad mini i believe it's free because it has a line over the e it's f-r-e with a line over the e like, so I'm, it, it wasn't I'm, free though yeah, I mean, it was I'm, free you, they, yes. they send it to you this is this was sent to us uh, by lifeproof i contacted them and they sent one to me um i excuse me uh like a lot of people recently acquired an ipad mini um you know black friday was just uh just past friday so True. probably a lot of people went out and bought ipad minis and uh, I think one of the most important things you do when you buy a device like that is make sure that it's protected. You really yes. should. Yeah, you don't want to uh, drop it or have somebody step on it. My uh, dad got the first. Sorry to interrupt. But I no, got the go first uh, Kindle in our family a couple years ago, and sat on it within 24 hours. Yeah, that's not. So good. that happened. <laughs> that happened to my wife. Really? Same thing. Uh, it was on the floor, and there was a pillow over it. Oh. And Zoe stepped on it. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, that, so that buy actually, a case, people. Buy a case. a case. That actually happened with my parents. Uh, my dad got an iPad Mini, and oh. uh, within a month, my mom had stepped oh. on it, uh, completely ruined the screen. Um, so don't let that happen to you. Buy a case. Uh, and when I got the iPad Mini, I asked Ray and Tom uh, what they had suggested for sure. uh, a case, and both of you said LifeProof, and I had never heard of them before. So I, I looked them up and. Uh, they, uh, it's funny, they, they promise a couple of things for their cases. They promise that it's completely waterproof, yep. fully submersible to six and a half feet, it says, completely closed to dust and uh, snow and ice. Is and what sand, they, too, right? And sand. Uh, and uh, it's uh, drop proof up to four feet. And you've tested all of these, right? I have not tested <laughs> the drop or the waterproofing because uh, I don't want to have to pay for another iPad Mini. But, but you sandblasted it, right? I, yes, I did <laughs> with <laughs> with my sandblaster. I did not. That, I did he not. owns. Um, so they they sent it to me. And Just to I, clarify, he said no. He did not. I did not do that. I do not do that. I'm I'm taking them at their word yeah. on all of those things. Uh, I will say that it is uh, dust and dirt proof. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I've. I've had it on my iPad Mini for a couple months, and I took it off the other day. I had no dust in there whatsoever. Excellent. That's cool. a good sign. Um, and when it showed up, I have to say, it's a really good-looking case. It's very uh, sleek. Um, it comes in black and white, so you won't be able to get you know pink or neon green or a sure. lot of those other uh, colors that cases come in. I'm holding it, right, I'm holding it up right now for our viewers. Uh, just... Completely black, um, has a piece of plastic over the screen that's clear. Also, a clear piece of plastic on the back, so you can see your Apple logo. That was kind of cool. Uh, And then a thick ridge of rubber and plastic around the outside, uh, you know, for drops and everything like that. Um, Very light. They promise that it's the lightest, uh, thinnest case. And out of the few that I've had... Uh, that I've tested. I've also tested an OtterBot's case, and that's a little bit thicker. Sure. Mm-hmm. I will say that this is very light. It's very thin. Um, and since it's waterproof, there are a couple things that I don't like about it because it's waterproof. Oh. Um, it's really... Uh, let me pop it open. The headphone jack is really set in because it's waterproof, and there's right. a, oh, yeah. a little rubber cap that goes over it. Uh, so you have to have a you know a straight 
jack to use. Right. You can't use any right angle ones or anything mm-hmm. like and that. And you have to have a, a jack that has a very thin... Uh, yes, you do. A, a thin cover on yeah. it. Cause yeah. Because I remember we were trying to plug it into the soundboard, and the only plugs that we had ha- had kind of big heads yeah, on them. Yeah, it would get caught in there. So you have to have a really small, narrow cable mm-hmm. to go into that. And uh, another thing that has to do with the audio is since it's completely covered, it, of course, covers the speakers. Oh. And uh, the audio is not bad coming through this, but it definitely sounds very muffled. Okay. Um, there is a little... Uh, like a like that. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there is a little uh, latch. Fun with sound. <laughs> uh, there is a little latch uh, to get to the Thunderbolt port. Lightning. I, uh, is it lightning? Lightning, yeah. I'm sorry, okay. I told him the wrong yeah, thing. Yeah, right? I, I ah. could not. I cannot remember what. I think it had something called. to do with inclement weather. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> is it the hail port? Is it the tornado port? Yeah, a thunderbolt's something else. That's, right? Yeah, that's on the Mac Pro. Yeah, or the MacBook. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a little thing to to open to get to that, and I've noticed that if I have that open, things sound much better. Oh, okay. Um, that course, makes sense. That does. You know, it's not waterproof when you do that, so <laughs> yeah. use that at, at your own risk. Um, overall, I really liked it. Um, I like that it completely covers everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the OtterBox case that I've used with this iPad Mini before does not cover the uh, camera. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. It is set back a little bit on that one, so there's not a, yeah. a lot of risk that you'll damage it. But this one actually has plastic to cover it. But the but, OtterBox was m- really more designed for just impact protection. Yeah, yeah Whereas exactly. this is designed for water and it's dust. It's supposed to be and, everything. So it has to be covered. Snow. Yeah. And as snow. It, it's life-proof, as they yeah. say. Um, and it also comes with a neck strap for Ooh. some reason. I'm still not entirely <laughs> sure why it came with one. Um, I've never really used it. Oh, okay. I have it on there right now just to show you what it looks like. I think it'd be awesome if you like put a clock on it yeah. and you could yeah. hang it in your chest like so, Flava Flav. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, we maybe should take I'll, a picture of that. I'll or if you suddenly became show. mute and you need to communicate via stylus. Yeah, that's true. Mm, yeah. yeah. You can have yeah. that. Have it with you. Um, we did talk about this before the show that there are some legitimate use cases. Like, yeah. I know that there's some uh, JEA linemen uh, yeah, who our, use our, iPads. Uh, electric- uh, electricity company yeah. up here in Jacksonville. Yeah, you told I've seen these. them use uh, iPads. And I can see going out there um, wanting to have something like this because you're in the rain. Sure. Um, you want to make sure that your device is covered. Um, for most people, I, it may be a little overkill, right? Mm-hmm. but you know, you just spent $350 on an iPad mini, a yeah. hundred it's, uh, by the way, that's another thing I'm, I'm not too thrilled about with this case. It mm-hmm. is a hundred dollars for this okay. case. Uh, the OtterBox that I mentioned by comparison is $45. Ooh, okay. big difference. Wow. Um, so, but you know, if you really want to make sure that your iPad is completely protected, I would go with this. Gotcha. Uh, you know, spend the extra money. It's worth it, I think. Um, I'm hoping someday soon to test the waterproofing. I'm going to take the iPad out of the case before <laughs> I do that so I don't ruin it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just just in see, case. Yeah, just to, just to see if it actually works. Um, another thing that I'm not too thrilled about is that it has uh, kind of connections on the side that are covered up when you get it to uh, put an Apple smart cover on this. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can use it as a stand and everything. Oh, okay. It does not gotcha. come with a stand. Mm-hmm. Other cases do come with stands. Okay. Uh, I kind of feel like if I'm going to pay $100 for this, should have a stand. I, I would want something I like want that. I want a kickstand. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but, you know, overall, I really like it. I've been, As I said, I've been using it for the past couple months. Um, it is extremely light. It's extremely easy to hold and everything. Um, and if you're willing to pay that extra money, I say go for it. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, I did find one other thing in my bag, and it's uh, chocolate-covered uh, sunflower seeds. That's right. So uh, I think we should wrap up so I can eat my chocolate-covered well, sunflower uh, seeds. What would you say about those? They're pretty yummy. Are they, are they <laughs> worth the money? They were. They were a two ninety nine at European Street Cafe, oh. and um, they're pretty delicious. They look like uh, M&M's, but they are actually chocolate-covered sunflower seeds. Oh, that sounds... They're quite All yummy. All right. Well, that's, uh, thanks for listening. That's all the time we have for today. Give us a call <laughs> if you have questions at our toll-free number, 1-888-972-9868. Or you can always send us an email at questions at dmble.com. Subscribe to the show. Search for Dmble Tech on iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and follow us or subscribe. Our producer is Sean Birch. I'm Tom Braun. I'm Ray Hollister. And this is Dmble Tech. Thanks for listening, and have a great week. <laughs>